Hello, and welcome to the Action One Overview, your home for risk-based patch management. Today, we're going to be going over Action One, its patching capabilities as well. To begin, we'll start from our endpoint console here, where we can see I have a few different endpoints currently installed with Action One. From here, I can select my endpoints. I can choose either all or some, and I can either apply reboots, scripts, remote access, applications, or updates to this particular endpoint. If I want, I can also select my system here, Let's see general information correlating to hardware info, as well as OS level information. You can see updates that this particular system is currently missing. This includes third-party patches, as well as Windows updates. And I can also easily see installed apps as well. Now, within Action 1 here, we can take a look at the patching capabilities. As discussed, when we click right here, we can see our selection of missing updates. It's very easy to choose our um, updates here and say deploy. And we're going to be brought through a couple of different steps. And we can see we control reboot options and various other settings. By saying next, we quickly and easily push out these updates to this desired system. Now, if I want to push out updates to more than one system at a time, the best way to do that is through policies. By clicking policies on the left-hand side, I can see here that I can create a variety of different automations within Action 1 to take weight off my shoulders and allow Action 1 to perform work in bulk on my behalf. You can see here that I can perform reboots, scripts, application deployments, uninstalls, all in an automated manner on a reoccurring basis. But the big thing we're going to look at right now is application updates. We can click right here, and we can see some different options that we have to choose from. I can choose all of my updates I want to push. I can do matching filters, so I can target things such as Windows updates only, third-party applications. I can also exclude certain update types as well, so I could exclude drivers in this instance or I can exclude vendors, names, or based off severity as well. Once I've created my filter, I can then proceed to configure other options within Action 1, such as additional options and various reboot parameters. And then I can choose what systems I want to apply this against. I can say all or groups that I've created. And then I can choose the frequency at which this policy runs. By having this run on a reoccurring basis, whether that's weekly, monthly, hourly, I'm essentially allowing Action 1 to automate my updating process. So I could have this run every Sunday and Friday at a specific time and have patches grow through accordingly. And by doing this, we're able to take a large weight off our shoulders in terms of not having a manually patch, as well as improve the security in my environment. Now, the next thing that we can take a look at is going to tie into endpoint management and patching as well, which is going to be our app store here. In our app store, we can see a collection of applications. By default, when you first log in, you will see only built-in apps. You can create your own via custom applications, but the App Store serves two purposes. It's designed to allow you to quickly and easily push out software to your endpoints via silent pushes. It also acts as your third-party app patch repository as well. We have a dedicated team on our backend that's essentially managing these packages, making sure that you have the latest version of these apps and that they install correctly. Now, in order to push out installations of these app applications. I can select as many apps as I want, say deploy. We're going to see the same general workflows you do with our policies and say next, target my endpoints and choose what I want to silently push these applications out. Now, again, we can also add in our own applications, which is quite easy to do. We can give this one a simple name. We can have multiple versions in place for our custom applications, which allows us to automate patching for these as well. And then it's very easy to essentially pick an MSI, EXE, and then choose to either point to a UNC path-based executable or MSI, or upload to the actual. We can also stack automations on top of this as well by simply saying, I want to perform, say, a reboot after install or any of the other actions that we see here. From here, the final two pieces we'll take a look at are going to be our dashboard and reports. Uh, with the reporting section here, we're able to grab a lot of good information about our environment, including things such as hardware inventory information. We can grab information surrounding patching. If we are missing any updates, as well as install history, this instance, I'm pulling up a missing update report. I can also pull up information regarding disk space, services, antivirus status, and security in various other areas within Action 1. So this is something I strongly recommend people dive into to inspect and identify what reports will work well in your situation. It is also good to point out that you can not export any of these reports to CSV or to HTML or subscribe and have these sent to you on a regular basis.
And with that being said, that is the end of our general overview of Action 1. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to the Action 1 team. And thank you very much for your time.